Good evening, folks. This is Deb. And before I hit the hay, I just wanted to stop and talk to you for a few minutes about the Supreme Court. We're not talking about women's issues. We're not talking about any of that. What we are talking about is what Jamie Raskin has described the court as, and he has called it the highest court in the land with the lowest ethical standards. And he's absolutely right. But that doesn't mean that just because there has not been a watchdog group or any kind of enforceable standards in the past that there shouldn't be now. Look, we all understand Clarence Thomas taking those nice luxury trips from Holland Crow. We know that Alito took a posh little trip to Alaska with a billionaire who laid ahead business in front of the court, which he ruled positively in favor of that billionaire. This should not be happening. You know, when I worked in printing and I bought printing, I was not allowed to take Celtics tickets from my vendors. Okay, we had ethical standards that we had to follow. All right? There's no reason why the Supreme Court, whose rulings affect the lives of millions of people, not just one billionaire, should not have a series of standards that must be followed and ethics that must be enforced, including recusal. You know, Ginny Thomas was up to her eyeballs in the insurrection. We have, we have emails, we have texts. We know she was up to her eyeballs in that. We know that Clarence Thomas became a Supreme Court justice and he was gleeful when he did because he could then stick it to the liberals. Okay, we know Samuel Alito's wife is a beast. End of story. She's out there whining that she wants a sacred hot flag because she doesn't want to have to look at the pride flag for a month. Okay, look, the Senate Republicans blocked just this week the Supreme Court Ethics Recusal and Transparency Act, which was put out there by the Democrats on the House on the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee. It was blocked by the Republicans. Any notion that you may have that the Republicans are going to come to terms with this and cross the aisle to join with the Democrats to rein in a Supreme Court that they built specifically so that they could institute Project 2025? You're dreaming if you think that's going to happen. It happens only one way. We stop this only one way. A strong Democratic majority in the House and the Senate and I am talking about requiring 60 votes in the Senate just to make any kind of real change in the Supreme Court. We need to come out at 70% of registered voters come November to put a stop to this and to make sure that the Supreme Court rules for the people, not the billionaires. I will talk to you all later.